Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, the assembly and setup of the Creality Ender 3 V2 Neo 3D printer. Well, last week on the show, I brought you guys the Creality 3D printer, and it was my first experience with 3D printing of any kind. I'd never seen it done, I'd never done it, I certainly never designed anything before, but everything worked out so well, and I was so pleased and so impressed with the machine. But I got several messages from you guys through the website, through email, etc., expressing your disappointment that I didn't show the assembly, and I also didn't show the setup. And while Creality does have some great videos on their website, you guys asked for it, so, well, here you go, you're going to get it. So let's head over to the bench and we're going to start off with the assembly of the Creality 3D printer. Well, there isn't really that much to the setup of this printer, and when you get it unpacked, being careful, of course, because the gantry is already pre-wired to the printing bed, all you need to do is place your gantry in the designated areas uh, where it goes on the printer bed and slide your printer slightly off the table or bench that you're working at and from underneath, very carefully, finger tighten in two bolts on each side. Two bolts on the left side of the gantry and two bolts on the right. From there, you can tighten these up and make sure that the gantry is firmly secured to the bed. That is all there is to it, to the installation of the gantry, and that part of it is ready to go. From there, we need to install the integrated panel, and the panel comes pre-assembled with the hardware already in place. All you need to do is on the right-hand side of the printer bed, in the aluminum extrusion, loosen off the three bolts that are already in your display, Align them in your channels of your aluminum extrusion and using the provided Allen key, tighten them down with the T-nuts that connect them inside the channels. That is all there is to it. After you get the panel mounted, you can just connect the ribbon cable, which is already in place, ready to plug in. And the very last thing to do with any of this assembly is to assemble or install the rack for the filament rolls. Now guys, as you saw on last week's show, I actually 3D printed an offset bracket because I don't like it mounted to the top like that. So I mounted mine to the side. Um, I'll place a link down below for that bracket if you're interested, but if not, that top bracket just gets mounted in the very top of the extrusion in the same fashion that we mounted our control panel already pre-installed hardware with the T-nuts there right on the uh, bracket, align it in the channels of the extrusion and tighten it down with the provided Allen keys. Well, with the main frame all put together, the next thing that you want to do is plug in your cables. Now guys, in the quick start guide, each cable is labeled and it's very clear as to where they get plugged in. I'm not going to go through which cable goes where because that is one thing in the Quick Start Guide that is right on the money and extremely clear. So follow your Quick Start Guide and install all of your cables. Well, before we go any further, you want to make sure that everything is tight, that everything fits well. What I mean by that is that there is no wiggle in the print bed. There shouldn't be any wiggle in the gantry. There shouldn't be any wiggle in your print head. So guys, the way that you need to adjust this is if we look here at the picture, we can see in the back that there are pulleys here or wheels that have um, a nut on the back of them. And what that nut is for is for adjustment. These are centrifugal wheels. You can move the nut one way or the other and it will tighten the wheel to the framework in order to tighten up either the bed or the print head or the gantry, whichever is having problems. So adjust everything so that it fits nice and tight. And once you get that done, you want to check that everything is moving correctly. So slide your bed back and forth, slide the gantry up and down at the motor side, making sure that everything moves smoothly. 
Also make sure that your print head moves smoothly from right to left along the gantry. If it does not, you may need to adjust your belt tension. And where you do that is on this front knob here, right in front of the print bed, and on this knob on the right side of the printer, on the right side of the gantry. So by adjusting these, you can tighten or loosen your drive belts, but in most cases, they should be good right from the box. Once you're happy with all of the fit of all of the parts, this is the time now to level the bed. And this is where the quick start guide really fails. So I'm going to take you over and we're going to go through the process to level this bed properly. And I say level because we're not really leveling it, but rather what we're doing is we're making all points on the bed an equal distance from the print nozzle. So let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what you need to do. Well, let me just walk you through the process of leveling your bed on your 3D printer. Guys, something here that I'd really like to point out. Right now, the machine is off. There's no power to any of the components. And because of that, I can very freely move both my printer bed and the printer head as well as the Z axis. Guys, once this power has been applied to the machine, do not try to move any of them unless you've disabled the stepper motors or unless you're using the move controls in your panel. You will damage your machine. So anyway, with that being said now, let's look at how we level the bed. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is power on your machine. Now on your control panel, you will scroll over to prepare and click on that and you can move down to auto home and click again and the machine at this point will tell you that it's homing the axis will change the bed will move let this finish up let it do its thing and when it's done your screen will return back to that prepare menu from here you can take a regular piece of paper just plain white paper and slide it onto your printer bed just like that and we're going to move our cursor up to the move tab we'll click on that and down here at the move z axis we're going to click on that and we are going to set this value to zero once you have that set you can click on it to set it in and then go back and at this point now, you want to go down to the Z offset. And we're going to adjust this. We'll click on it to make it adjustable. And we are going to adjust this ever so slightly until we have friction on our paper, but not a lot. You just want a little bit of friction here. So we'll just gently slide this back and forth and when you start to feel it that you're getting resistance of sliding that paper, that's when you want to stop. Okay, we're getting some resistance there at 170. Now, it's, it's kind of going to scrape. It's going to feel like it's scraping on that paper, and that is perfect. So there you go. At 170, we'll now click that to set it in place, and then we will go back and disable our stepper motors. Now, with our stepper motors disabled, this gives us the ability now to move our printer head back and forth across our printer bed. So what we're going to do at this point now is we need to level all four corners. So we're just going to slide it so that the printer nozzle is directly above this adjustment screw here. And if you look at the edge of it, you'll see it's very clearly labeled which way to rotate it for up or down. So we're going to go this way for down, this way for up. And we're going to feel the resistance there of the paper. And we're just going to adjust that screw until we get the same amount of resistance that we felt when we had it at its auto home position. And then from there, we're going to slide it over to the next corner. And again, feel the resistance of the paper going to adjust it until we get that same resistance and then to the back corner 
gonna feel it. There's not much resistance there at all. So we're gonna move it up to increase your resistance, down to decrease it. And we're pretty good there. And then here we go with this one. All right, so that is one time around. While the manufacturers say to do it twice, I like to do it three times. And usually by the third time around, I don't have to make any adjustments. It's just a check for me. Okay, so there you go, there's that one. So we'll go around two more times and check the resistance on all four corners to make sure they're the same. Now guys, if at any point in time, once you've done it three times, you're still not happy with the results, keep going. Keep going, do it a fourth, do it a fifth, do it a sixth, do it 10 times if you have to, until you're happy that all four corners have the same kind of resistance. And like I said, it's gonna feel like it's grinding almost, like that really, that bit of friction there. And at this point, once you're happy with it, we're going to move our printer head into the center of our printing bed, and we're gonna check the resistance there again. And if it feels the same as all four corners, then you're fine. If not, you can go here into the Z offset click on it and adjust your value. Once you're happy with that, you can remove your paper. We will go back to our main menu, go to leveling and click leveling. And the machine will go around and it's going to check at 16 points to see how close it is. And I'm not sure what it does internally. <laughs> I really don't know. But what it's doing essentially is checking and making internal electronic adjustments. So let that finish. And that folks is all she wrote. The bed is level and ready to go. So let me show you how to load some filament and get going on your first print. All right, so at this point we want to load some filament. And I just have the white sample that it came with. It's almost gone because I've been printing so much stuff. But what you want to do is on the end, you want to take it and using the provided cutters, cut it at about a 45 degree angle. And now what I'm going to do, you see this hole right here. This is where the filament loads. So I've placed my spool here on the rack. Yours, if you didn't do a relocation bracket, will be up top. So it doesn't matter where your bracket is. It's all the same process. This right here is your release. You see how that's spring loaded? So you can push this out of the way and then we're going to push our filament in. And what's gonna happen is it's going to load into that white tube that you see back here, which goes all the way to the, um, to the print head. So we're gonna push it all the way in until we get resistance, until it stops, essentially. And there we go, right there, it stops. There is nowhere else for it to go. So it is now loaded in this white tube and it is sitting at the print head. So let's have a look at the control panel and I'll show you what to do next. Now, if you remember what I said, you cannot move the components while this thing is plugged in unless you have that motor, the stepper motor disabled. Well, by bed leveling, you have re-engaged that motor. So the first thing that we want to do now that we have our PLA, in this case, loaded into our tube, is we want to go to prepare and I'm going to go to move and I want to move the Z axis and I want to raise it up. So the bigger the number, the higher it's going to raise above the bed. So I'm just going to change this. We're just going to say to, oh, I don't know, let's do 50, 50.3. And then you can click that to set it in and click back. So once you go back, you want to come down here to preheat PLA, which is the material that we're using today. And we'll just click that. And what that is going to do is it's going to heat up that printer head to 200 this one goes to about 201 degrees, and that is going to melt your filament. 
Okay, so we're now heated up. We're at 200 degrees and 56 in the bed and still climbing. So at this point, we want to go up to move. And instead of moving anything normal like the X, Y, or Z, we're going to move the extruder. So we will just click on this to activate it, and this will be in millimeters. How many millimeters of filament do you want to extrude? And the purpose for this is, if it's a new machine, for starters, you're priming the nozzle. If you have just changed filament and you're changing colors, it is going to wash and clean out all of the previous color and get the pure color of the new filament that you're using. A positive number will make the filament come out of the nozzle. A negative number will actually draw it back. So you want to be careful of that. So we're going to turn it clockwise and let's just say we're going to do, oh, I don't know, let's do 25 millimeters. And we'll just click on that. And at this point now, the extruder is going to turn and it will pump out 25 millimeters of filament through the extruder and out through the nozzle. And then when it's done, you can just exit off of there, go back, and then back again to the main metal menu. And guys, we are now ready to print. Well, in order to print your project, you want to hit the main menu and click on print. And from there, depending on what you have on your micro SD card that's plugged into the front of your printer, you will have a list of all of your different projects that you have on that card. So let me just pick a quick one here that uh, we can print just as an example. We'll do this one, one of the washers for my table saw. So guys, you just want to click on this. Once you click on it, the filament temperature will start to rise, although we've already primed it or heated it. Your bed temperature will rise, and then once everything is heated and ready to go, your project will start printing. Now this is where you want to pay attention. So the first thing that your printer is going to do is it's going to position itself where it needs to be. It will draw a line of filament here along the left side of the bed and it will draw a line around just outside the perimeter of your project. At this point you want to be paying attention. If it's flat and squished down, chances are your nozzle's too close to your bed. If it is uh, too far away, chances are your filament will not adhere to the bed properly and it's just gonna make a mess everywhere. Well, there is a way that you can adjust this and all you need to do is go into the tune section of our print and down here at our Z offset, we can click on that and we can adjust it. It looks to me like it is not adhering very well to the bed. So I want to tighten it up, get it a little bit closer. In order to get it closer to the bed, you need this to be a smaller number. So we're just going to turn it down to 1.68 instead of 1.7. And then we can watch it and see how well it's printing. If you like, you can still adjust it further. Okay, so let's just have a look at what the bed looks like so that we can kind of troubleshoot it. Well, this is where paying attention to your first print is so important. This perimeter printing right here, that should have been a perfect circle around the outside of the perimeter of this washer that was printed. But you can see here, it wasn't sticking. It was all over the place. This should have been three layers in a perfect circle because it follows a certain diameter outside of your print. It should have been in a perfect shape, in this case a circle, and it should have been three layers perfectly on top of each other. What we have here is a layer that decided not to stick and it went all out of the way. I don't even know what it did there. And a strange kind of a multi-sided circle it's not round, it's not pretty, and it's not the way it should be. We could also see that by the time I got to the adjustment, look at the inside of the hole of that washer. It's not round, and that is because it tried to do the circle there, but again, it wasn't adhering. A very good indication that you've got too much of a gap between your print head and your bed. 
So we reduced it and it didn't take much. So we just reduced it by 0 0.02 is what we reduced it to to get that nozzle a little tighter. And once we got that nozzle tighter to the bed, the print started to clean up. Until you get that adjustment, choose a small project to test it on. We can see what a mess the back of this thing is. That should be a nice clean print. And it's nobody's fault except my own. This is not the printer, this is poor adjustment. And that's why you need to tune it right from the get-go when you're doing that first print. Once you get that adjustment done, you are absolutely golden. So there you go, guys. There is how to adjust your prints when they're first starting to get an absolutely perfect result and really good bed adhesion. And there you have it. The assembly and setup of Creality's Ender 3 V2 Neo 3D printer. Guys, I cannot stress enough how much to take your time when it comes to the bed leveling. It is one of the most important steps in order to get successful and good looking prints. I also want to point out that if you see during a print that you're not really happy with the quality, you can still go into that tune function and adjust your Z offset to give it that little tiny tweak to help you to get the better print that you're looking for. Um, no matter how you look at it, guys, the setup on these is not difficult as long as you follow certain steps and just take your time. Find yourself a small little test project. Find yourself something tiny that isn't going to waste too much filament that you can just give it a try and test out the quality of your print. If you're not happy with that quality, start from the beginning. Start over again. Re-level that bed. Think about what you did. Think about how that friction of the paper against the nozzle how much friction was there? Was it really tight? Was it kind of loose? Do you think you could have some more? And eventually, with tweaking and that sort of thing, you can get it dialed in perfectly. Guys, this is not an exact science. Each printer is different. Each bed has maybe a different warp or a different setup. Not every bed is dead flat. Don't forget, too, that these beds heat up. You're heating it up to 50 degrees or more, depending on your project. And that's going to cause expansion in that bed. That expansion in that bed, while it may not be extensive, may be enough to throw things off a little bit. So don't think, oh my gosh, I just got this fully set up and now it's doing this. And maybe the heat of your bed is changing something, so you might want to tweak that Z offset. So don't get too frustrated, guys. It's supposed to be fun. It is fun. And as long as you take your time and you hit it with the right attitude and follow the steps that I've given you today, you're going to have fun doing it. I know you are because I love this stuff. I've only been doing it a short time and I already love it. And guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you found this tutorial uh, useful. For those of you that sent me the messages and the emails, I want to thank you so much for sending that in. Uh, I appreciate the show suggestion. I appreciate the request. And I hope that I didn't disappoint with what I brought you today. If you haven't already, guys, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. As always, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you've enjoyed today's content. I hope that if you have one of these Ender 3 printers, that this is going to help you set up your bed and your machine to get the most out of it. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.